Hi, my name is Scott Moles. Uh, this is a screen test for a splash of paint. And basically what I'm going to be doing today is using acrylic paints uh, to do a wet on wet uh, technique. I think you might find it very useful because um, it's good because as you know, when you're using um, acrylic paints, they dry very, very quickly. So this is a good way to cover a lot of area um, in a very short amount of time. So basically what I'll be doing is, uh, these are the colors that I'll be using. Um, I'll be using titanium white, process yellow, uh, yellow okra, burnt sienna, burnt amber, oxidized purple, oxidized blue, and phthalo green. So I hope that helps. And I'll use a little bit of fluorescent paint as well because it's brightens things up a little bit. So this is basically our start. I'll take a little bit of white paint, spray the scent up. If you're using white paint, it does help to spread the colours. So we use a bit of titanium white. I mix straight on the canvas, as you can see. I have quite a lot of colour. Um, I use, um, I'm using a quarter round brush, which is a very good brush to use when you're covering a lot of area. You can move quite smoothly around. You don't push the brush straight in, but you get the paint on there. And because the canvas is slightly wet, it helps me to move the colours around. So titanium white, I put quite a bit on. I cover the centre, because what I'm basically going to be doing is like a sunset, but I'm going to be using different colours, which will help brighten things up. So it's slightly a different technique than we normally use. Once I've got the centre that I like, and I think I've used enough real um, titanium, I take a small amount, a small amount of fluorescent yellow, and then basically I gently start working on my way around. As you can see, there's not much paint on there at the moment, but it helps because basically I'm going to be mixing it with the yellow, with the white, with the titanium white. And I just want to give a bright effect so it gives you a, a lot of colour but not too much to start off with. This is a real good way to um, blend the colours as well. And every so often I'll add a little bit of water, not too much. I use a little spray bottle, this has only got water in it, um, which really does help. A little bit more, as you can see, not too much. You can always add to it, but if you leave the centre white and then work the colours away, I don't really change the paintbrush either. I try to use the same paintbrush and then work my colours in. As you can see, it starts to, you can see it gives you the white effect. Now I'm going to use some yellow. This is Kagan yellow, it's quite a rich colour. Then I can start blending it and I add a little bit of water, not too much water, but it helps me to blend it. I don't really mix much on the palette itself. Because it's a canvas, I can actually blend the colours quite comfortably onto it. By doing this, it gives you a richer blend. Now as you can see, I'm working away from the white fluorescent yellow. And you can, like I say, you can cover quite a bit of area. This canvas is um, a 20 inch by 16 inch. Um, as you can see, I can just blend the colours straight on there. It doesn't look much at the moment, admittedly, but you'll be able to see it start to come to life as I work it. As you can see, I'm just using the tip of the paintbrush. I'm not using too much, not using too much paint. I use the paint, I gradually build the colours up as I go along. You can see by using this, it gives you quite a good effect. A bit more yellow. Because what I'm going to start to do is move away and use that yellow ochre. But I'm going to add the yellow in, give you a real nice effect. You can see the blending of the colours. You can still see the fluorescent colours and the titanium white. But it gives you quite a rich colour to pull away from. Because basically what I want to do is I want to put a tree and a nice green area in. I want it to be quite a welcoming picture. It's quite a welcoming, welcoming picture and people quite enjoy the, colours, the actual colour scheme. So remember, we don't go back on colours, so we work from the lighter colours backwards. So we don't really want to, we want to make sure that we've, had, we've actually added enough of the yellow before we start to use a paintbrush with darker colours, because then I'd have to clean the brush or use a new brush if I wanted to go back to yellows. Yeah? So we're working away with colours. So once I've got enough of the yellow, which I think that's quite enough, yeah? Then I'll go on to the, the okra. And as you can see, it looks like a dirty colour, but it really does blend well. It's a very rich colour, and it works really well 
with the KD Miller. And as you can see, as you blend it, again I still use the water because I'm actually mixing it on the palette. I'm actually mixing it on the canvas, sorry. And it gives you such a, a rich amount of colour. And as I said to you before, it's very easy to cover a, a big amount of canvas in a short amount of time. You do have to, I mean it takes a bit of practice. You do have to watch you don't put too much water on because if you do, the colour starts to run. So it's better to add less water because you can always add more if you need it. So as you're mixing the colours, you can see the yellow starts to really blend well. Again, I only use a small amount of colour. And you can see how quick you can actually cover the canvas with the colour. And as you can see, the richness of the colour, everything's drawn into the centre. So it gives you a good perspective. I'm still using the same colour, but I'm just laying it on a, bit, a little bit thicker than I was before. Again, we start from the back. A little bit of water, don't put too much. It takes a little bit of a while to get used to the technique of using a spray bottle rather than mixing everything on the actual colour. But I've, I found this to be very useful because um, I sometimes paint at concerts and you get a very limited amount of time to paint. So you, if you want to cover the whole canvas with a nice background, this is a real, real good way of doing it. Um, and I think, I think many people find it useful. So hopefully this will help you out. Add a little bit more water. Again, you can, you can see how the colours blend very well using the water. From the white further out. I don't overdo the colour. Because you, know, you can always go back and add more colour. You see how the, the paint... Oh, something else as well. If you notice, I use the, 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 the actual clips. Simply because I can get to the edge of the, the canvas very easy. Rather than using the actual lip. So, if you've got the carry pins on the side, it's a good way to um, actually hold the canvas. Let me just uh, bring this around. Again, just gradually mixing the colours in. Again, I'm still adding just a small amount of water. If you're not sure about the water, you can always use your hand or a cloth to dry the brush off. There's no special technique to dry the brush off. The hand does work well if you haven't got much time. Right. Now you can see I've got quite a lot of the burnt amber. Now I'm going to go on to a little bit of the burnt, the burnt amber. Sorry, that was yellow ochre, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to start blending the colours in. Now this, because I want to draw people into the colour, I start to use the darker colours on the outside. It gives you a very warm, warm effect. Take that cloth. Sometimes you can actually squirt it straight directly onto the brush as well, if you're unsure. So as you can see, the paint, I don't actually use an awful lot of paint, it's right on the tip of the brush. So I'm not using a great deal of paint, it's very important I emphasise that. Because if you use too much paint, you'll find that you'll be putting too much paint, it's very hard to water down the paint, and you'll be causing quite a mess. And we're trying to avoid that. So again, I put the, the um, burnt amber, up to the top, you can see that there's a little bit of water there. I'm going to teach you something now. You can just dab. If you put a little bit too much water on and it starts to run, you can dab it away. Yeah. Yeah. So don't panic, because we don't want to lose that white. A bit more up here, up on the corners, just to draw the colour in. That's it. Normally, actually, when I'm spraying face on, I normally spray to the side. Yeah, so I don't put too much water on myself. Because I, I've often made the mistake of putting too much water on. It took me a little while to grab, grab constantly how to put it on. Because it's something that I've kind of developed slowly over time. So it's, it's practice and error, really. Right, so I've got a bit more paint down here. Again, the clips come in quite handy because I can actually go around the clips. The picture really does start to come together quite nice. A bit more at the top. Draw the colours. Can you see how good the colours blend? It's one thing I do like about doing this, this style of painting. Because you can always add more colour, you can put more depth in it. By adding darker colours, it brings out the centre. 
You know, from the white piece of canvas that you saw at the beginning, I've drawn you into the centre by doing this. Simply by mixing the colours up and drawing the colours in. Right. Burn the hands next. I'm just going to put a, not too much of this because it is quite a deep colour. But I just want to draw you just a little bit more into the depth of that colour. So I'll just put a bit more. I'm going to be drawing slight landscape coming in this side. And uh, can you see just by adding a little bit of colour, it can draw draw you further into the painting. It's quite cool, isn't it? Really, right works. Not too much. You can, I can actually start to see, you can actually start to see it come together now, really, to be honest with you. Because from this darker colour, I can just bring in that area a little bit. So it looks like there's trees in the background. Not too much paint, I mix the two paints together, I think you can just see, just slightly mix them together to give me a slight effect. Put it on the brush, there we go. So it looks like there's trees in the background. Yeah. Now these are just, remember when you're doing shading, trees are drawn, when we look into the perspective of a, draw, a painting, it's drawn away, so there's not much detail, it's just, just a slight shaping of the trees. I'm still using the same brush, remember I've not washed this brush yet. This is why this is quite useful. Because I don't really like washing brushes all the time, it takes a lot of time to do it. So as you can see, I'm just drawing away the colour. Now what I'm gonna basically do here, so you can sort of get an idea of what I'm doing, I'm going to start putting in a bit of a landscape. I'm using a slightly darker colour so I can get the other colours, uh, slightly darker brown. Because what I'm basically going to do is draw, draw you deeper into the picture. So as you can see, it gives you a bit of an awareness of what I'm doing. And it doesn't take long. But I'm going to darken these edges down a bit. Because when we start to add to trees, and the darker colours. Now I'm drawing you further in, as you can see I'm drawing you further into the picture. That's why I can bring these down a little bit. And I can kind of pick what I want to do. The good thing about doing these type of pictures is I'm not actually working from a picture. The picture that I'm working from is the one that's in my mind. So I can then pick and choose what I want to do with it. I want to really set an atmosphere more than anything else. As you can see by what I'm doing, I'm trying to draw you in. I'm trying to draw you into a place. And I can do this simply by adding the darker colours. Right, that's it for part one. Uh, in part two, we'll come back and we'll finish off the paint. I'm going to put trees and a landscape and you'll get a bit more of an idea of what to do. Hi, right, welcome back. Um, we'll be going to the next stage. I've done the wet on wet stage. Now we're going to try a slightly different, more, uh, different technique. I'm going to be painting some trees in. So what basically I'll be doing is mixing some burnt amber and some blue. Now I'll use a paint because I want to do a wet mix. As you can see I want to darken it down because I want the trees to stand out. I don't want a nice shadow. So as you can see me mixing a bit of blue. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because this is really going to be, you can see how watery I do it. Looks a bit like that. So maybe a bit of that as well. I'm going to put the trees in about here, and there's no real technique into putting the trees in a bit more. No, I need a bit more wet. Yeah, I'll be, I'm using actual burnt, burnt amber and oxidised blue. Um, sometimes it's good to add a little bit more water. As you can see, it looks like a bit of a muddy mix. But what I basically want to do is do the muddy mix. I want it watery, see. Now what I'm basically doing is twisting the, twisting the actual paintbrush. And then I'm, I'm, I'm placing it on it. As you can see, I'm not really going really controlled. I just really want to put the shape of a tree in. Someone said to me a long time ago, the best way to do trees is when you're old. And I tend to agree with them because basically no tree is perfect. No tra tree is straight up. It's going everywhere. So as you can see, 
it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's good to get. I twist the paintbrush. This is a round number eight, I believe. No, round, round number four. And what basically I'm doing is, is I'm twisting the paintbrush and it gives you that shape of it going everywhere. Can you see? A little bit more watered colour that I've already mixed. And then I come off. Come off, that's it. As you can see, as you can see, because it's got a water mix at the back, I can use the front part as a slightly darker colour. And the back would be slight it would be darker, but we can we can bring a bit of detail in, see? I'm gonna put a little bit more water. This isn't the tree isn't finished yet. I'm gonna be using another brush in a second, but I just want to put one on this side. And then we'll draw this up here. As you can see, I'm not going greatly detailed. I just want to bring in the shape of the tree. Draw it in. Yeah. We don't want perfection to start with. A little bit more water, a little bit more blue. The blue is very strong. So when you, you're mixing it with a burnt sienna, it will take a lot of the colour out of it. So I only use a small, small amount of oxidised blue. As you can do, I'm not really worrying about too much technique here because basically the more wobbly your hand, <laughs> the actual better the picture. Right, the second brush I'll be using is this liner brush. As you can see, it's got a longer end than a normal brush. It's very good for doing straight lines, if you're doing curls, very, very good brush to use. You can get different sizes for different thicknesses. Again, I'll wet the brush, twist it on, on the actual palette. I fill the brush up quite a lot. So the second part is I'll follow it through and then I'll start to make smaller. I've already done the bigger branches, so we can start to make smaller ones off of it. Again, the canvas will soak up uh, the actual paint very quickly, so you really do have to load the brush up. A little bit more water. But burnt sienna, touch of blue. The dark of the blue gives you a really nice effect. But I'm not really worried too much because what I'll actually get from this is as I twist it, a bit more water, a little bit more water, mix up a little bit more paint. Again, same process, a little bit more water. And as I start to bring the colours out, there you go, that's better. You could see from the first few brushes that I did, I didn't have enough paint on it. Or well, the paint really wasn't watery enough. Remember, acrylics can be quite thick. So by doing this, I can enjoy the colours out. Put a few more on this side. Okay. Just to bring them out. Clean the brush off. Right, the next step is to start adding bushes and trees. So what we're going to do now is panthenol green, which is a, this is a very strong colour. I'm going to add the green. I'm actually going to do the trees first. Now we want to do a darker background because we want the f to put more colour in front. So you can add panthenol green, a little bit of blue, the oxidised blue, and that will darken down the colour a little bit. We can add a touch of water. You can add a little bit of burnt sienna just to darken it off. A bit more burnt sienna there. Then we can start. Now, it looks very similar to the actual colour of the tree that we've already done, but it's okay. Again, okay, I'm using a round brush still, because this is really just for background. And as I start to bring the colours out, this is really just, I might add a little bit more blue. Perhaps my green is very thick, a little bit more blue, a little bit more burnt sienna, a little bit more water, only a touch. And as we start to add, 